Hello, you're welcome to Care Diagnostics Part 4. If you want to see Part 3, click on the link below. Today we're dealing with the manufacturer's side of the engine computer. And we have our drawing done out here to help us understand how the system works. And up here on top we have the engine computer. And this is the manufacturer's side of the engine computer. And here we have OBD2. That's OBD2 side of the engine computer. And over here we have the engine management light, the light that comes on the dash when there's a fault in the system. Now OBD2 has to do with emissions. It's the job of OBD2 to watch the sensors on the engine and if there's a fault in the engine to register a code in the engine computer and turn on the light in the dash. Um, now this is the information we receive when connecting our diagnostic tool into OBD2. And here we have a, a fault code P0101 mass airflow sensor and this is a P code it will always be P the number will change but it will always be P and these P codes are very easy to research on the internet and always use the P code to do your research pending codes you will find on this side of the computer erase fault codes you will always find on this side of the computer live data now the live data you see on this side of the computer is the true value, it's not a substituted value. Uh, freeze frame you will always find on this side of the computer. And over on this side we have the information we receive from the manufacturer side of the engine computer. And here we have our 16 pin plug that's underneath the dash and here we have our diagnostic tool. And this tech diagnostic tool has to have the capability of connecting into the manufacturer side of the computer. And when you have that type, this type of diagnostic tool you can switch from OBD2 over to manufacturers. You can switch back and forth. So this is the information now we received from the manufacturer side of the computer. And here we have our 16485 mass airflow sensor fault. Now you can get emission related uh, codes here and you can get codes that are not related to emissions that will not turn on the engine management light in the dash. So if you have a fault in the system, you don't see any light on the dash, go into the manufacturer's side and see if there are codes on that side of the computer. Now this code here is a manufacturer's code, so if you go to a different manufacturer, you will have a different code here. Now if you're doing research, uh, go back to the P code and do your research with the P code. Pending codes, uh, if you don't find it on this side of the computer, you'll find it in OBD2. Erase fault codes, you will always find on both sides of the computer. Live data. Now you will fa find far more live data in the manufacturer side of the computer than you will in OBD2. Now on, with live data on this side of the computer, sometimes you will see substituted values. Now we'll say the mass airflow sensor is faulty and the engine computer gang can't get any information in from the mass airflow sensor. What I will do is it will look at the other sensors on the engine and it will use those to create a substituted value and you will see uh, the grams per second here when you rev the engine they will go up and they will go down this is a substituted value but to see the true value you have to go back to the live data on OBD2 and when you go in there you'll probably see that the mass airflow sensor is stuck at 2 grams and when you rev it it won't go up and it won't go down there's a fault in the system. So what you have to do is you have to go to the mass airflow sensor, check it out. If the mass airflow sensor is faulty, put in a new one. Go back to the live data in OBD2 and you'll find that the, now the, the grams per second will move up and move down when you rev the engine. Freeze frame data, if you don't find it on this side of the computer, you will always find it on OBD2. Now activation, you can go into activation and you can act, activate components on the car. You can activate, in some cars you can activate nothing, in other cars you can activate three or four items and on other cars you can activate the lights, the indicators, the horn, the, uh, the wipers, the fuel pump, the um, electric windows, uh, you can activate the central locking. Let's say you have a fault in the electric window on the driver's door, it won't go down and it won't go up. You can go into activation and tell the computer, put down the window. The computer will put down the window 
and tell it to put up, it'll put up the window. Now you know that the window's not sticking, you know the motor is okay, you know the wiring out to the motor is okay, so you need to go after the switch and the wiring to the switch to fix the, fix the problem. You can carry out adoption on components on the engine. You can carry out adoption for the throttle body and the diagnostic tool will guide you through uh, the procedure for carrying out adoption to the throttle body. You can code different items on the engine and you can code injectors and again the diagnostic tool will guide you through the procedure of coding injectors. You can carry out force regeneration of the DPF. You can register a new DPF with the engine computer. And we'll say you have, you have, you're fitting a component to the engine and you're not sure if it needs to be adopted or coded. So go into adoption and see your component listed there for adoption. Go into coding, see your component listed there for coding. Um, now that's it. That's all the information coming from, from the manufacturer side of the computer. The next video we will be carrying out will be on fuel trims. And uh, thank you for looking in.